Uh, welcome back. Uh, in last lecture, we started the cholesterol. I will briefly summarize again what we did. So here is a cholesterol. Uh, it has mainly two cavities. Uh, one is called buncher cavity. The other is called catcher cavity. You, I, I hope you know well now what cavity is. It stores electromagnetic energy in the form of the sustained uh, standing EM waves. And depending upon uh, the component along the travel direction, it can be TE or TM mod. Okay. And e, you also know that cavity is excited by some RF input. So uh, the microwave signal we want to amplify is applied at the Bunger cavity input, and the output microwave amplified signal is the output at the catcher cavity. And here is the summary of what we did. Cathode at cathode the electrons get generated they start at zero velocity they pick up the velocity when they move towards the anode and after that they gain the constant velocity v0 and uh, so cathode has uh, uh, the voltage applied to the cathode is v0 which is quite high as compared to the amplitude of rf input okay that assumption is very important without that we cannot uh, you know get a lot of relations and as well as the amplification process will not be smooth and that is attainable you can always control it v0 is in your control completely you can make it as high as possible then when the so so there is there is this gap okay here and we allow these uh, electrons to pass through this so called the grid puncher grid what happens is when electrons reach here at this point uh, that is this point okay so because of the uh, em waves inside uh, the uh, inside the puncture cavity the electrons experience the potential definitely it is a sinusoidal uh, you know in nature so there will be a time moments when 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 uh, there is zero value of the strength of electric field inside the puncture cavity during that time the electrons will not get affected they will pass on they will continue to move with velocity v not but there is a time when there is a positive half cycle of the EM wave uh, inside the puncture cavity. During that time, electrons will experience an acceleration. And during negative time, they will experience the acceleration. And what will happen uh, effectively is there will be it will form the bunch of electrons, hence the name puncture cavity. The electrons which will be moving uh, at similar velocities, they will bunch together. And as they bunch together, they actually you know the variation of these electrons with time they result in a current which we call then current modulation i of t and then here we have a cavity when these electrons reach here at the catcher cavity now what happens is when they will cross through this they get slowed down and their kinetic energy gets changed into the potential energy which results in the oscillations in the catcher cavity and the oscillations uh, because of this you will see the v naught factor will be there uh, because of which the oscillations will have uh, quite high amplitude as compared to the input and we get the uh, amplified output at the rf output okay we also derived this expression so we use the conservation of energy and this assumption you can see v1 is much less than v naught and here are some of the uh, notations we did last time and we finally the main expression we got is that uh, the velocity okay after it you know uh, it 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 reaches the puncture cavity the velocity gets modulated okay we call it velocity modulation and you can see it gets modulated with what one is the frequency and then there is also a phase term right which depends upon the distance between uh, the gap in the puncture cavity and you see there is a factor v1 by v0 okay v1 is the maximum amplitude of em wave which we want to amplify and v0 is the your dc source okay and you know t0 is a time okay i will go back here t0 is the time when an, when an electron enters this gap and t1 is the time when it leaves this gap so the velocity you can express in terms of t naught or t1 as i have discussed it there will be a slight change in the sign 
so if you use t naught then this will be the expression if you use t1 there is this minus of theta g by 2 now today we will be studying the bunching process this was a velocity modulation process now we will study the bunching process and uh, we will like to derive finally we will get the insight that how amplification takes place actually to understand bunching process this space time diagram will help us so on the y axis we are having a distance okay uh, so as electron is moving what distance it is covering and x axis is the time now you see uh, there, there are three important instances we select one is this where we write same so same means uh, the you can see that okay this is the you know voltage variation uh, you know at in the bunch grid and uh, when when it is zero definitely the electron which and you know enters here the grid that electron will not experience any potential any you know field at that time because its value is zero so we read it is the same velocity it will move with the same velocity and it will reach to some distance delta l it will cover some distance delta l whereas the electron which uh, which which has uh, entered the grid earlier than see tb is a time when this electron enters which experiences zero potential zero field then there is a ta time which is less than tb so it means the earlier earlier electron okay so that electron has entered the grid before this electron but because of negative potential it will experience retardation okay deceleration so it will be slowed down but ultimately this electron will also reach uh, cover the same distance okay and meet meet this electron then the electron which will enter later on at time tc okay that tc time is corresponding to the maximum amplitude ta time is corresponding to the minimum amplitude so that electron because it is a positive potential now it is experiencing positive field so it will accelerate the electron and this electron although it entered into the grid later on but it will move faster and catch up these two electrons so this forms one bunching center okay this forms one bunching center and one very important thing is how much is the difference between these times you can see that uh, if you have a complete time period t here so so when when do you say a complete time period you start it like this right and like this and uh, you can see that if this time is t then this time is t by 2 hence this time is t by 4 okay so uh, you know that t is equal to 2 pi by omega so t by 4 is equal to uh, pi by 2 omega so that is why the difference between these two points t a t b and t and t b t b and t c that is the slowest point same velocity point and fastest point that is pi by 2 omega what is this time td it is the time when all the three elect these electrons they are getting bunched together they are meeting together okay that is denoted by td okay now first of all i will again write here uh, the velocity modulation equation which we got last time so this is the equation and uh, we definitely need the minimum and maximum value corresponding to the velocities because when it is when it is slower then this velocity will have the minimum value when it is faster it will have the maximum value now the minimum and maximum value of this velocity will depend upon the minimum maximum value of sine right so you know that sine has minimum value minus one maximum value plus one this allows us to write that the v minimum will be corresponding to the value of sine equal to minus one that will be then v naught times 1 minus beta i v1 by v0 and v max the maximum velocity which will be attained at when it, when when the potential at the bunch of the grid has maximum value that is v0 times 1 sine of this quantity will be 1 1 plus beta i v1 by v0 this is quite simple now look at this figure carefully what is delta l 
delta l is a distance from the bunched grid to the location where the bunch is formed okay when is the bunching happens okay so what will be the relationship between delta l and you have to see carefully uh, the timing also so if you look at this uh, the, uh, the this point the velo the point where the velocity is same okay so that is point tb and what is the time where when the bunch is formed that time is td and what is the difference here time difference that is td minus tb so you can say that the time taken when an electron which experiences zero potential enters into the buncher cavity till the time the bunch is formed that time is td minus tb right and what is the velocity of the electron which experiences zero potential at tb it is same v naught so we have very simple relationship this distance covered will be velocity times the time difference td minus tb correspondingly we can also look at like this look at the slower part when the potential is negative minimum definitely electron will have the minimum velocity and the time uh, point on the time axis is ta and the time difference will be ta minus td so again it will cover the same distance delta l but now the velocity is v minimum because this electron at this point is experiencing minimum potential it will be retarded and uh, what is the time difference definitely td minus ta right but now if you want to write everything in terms of suppose uh, tb uh, so you can easily uh, see one one thing that this what is the relationship between uh, uh, you know ta uh, tb and td you can see that so you can look at it let me first erase so ta look at here ta is equal to tb minus pi by 2 omega okay because the difference is pi by 2 omega okay so similarly you can see here tc so tc is equal to tb plus pi by 2 omega because we want to make this tb as a reference here where the uh, velocity of electron remains same so you can then write this v uh, minimum times td minus tb plus pi by 2 omega okay now similarly we can also write this distance in terms of the electron which experiences maximum velocity as v max now look at the figure back so the maximum moving electron enters the grid at tc time and the moment bunch is formed is td the difference is td minus tc so the distance will be velocity times td minus tc but we can also write it as v max td minus tb uh, minus pi by 2 omega okay and you know v max and v minimum they are given by this these two expressions which we got from the velocity modulation now we substitute the values of uh, v max and v minimum what will we get so we will get first of all delta l equal to so v max v minimum we'll take first of all so that is v naught this is the v minimum then time is this uh, td minus tb plus pi by 2 omega. now we will manipulate the terms and we get the first term v naught time is td minus tb okay and then the next term we multiply this v naught with pi by 2 omega so we get plus v naught pi by 2 omega and then we multiply this v naught with beta i v v1 by v naught and then with td by td minus tb so we get minus v naught beta i this expression and then remains one more term wherein we have v naught multiplied by beta i v1 by v2 
plus and pi by 2 omega so we get this one so we club up these terms together and in the same way when we substitute the value of v max we will again get delta r equal to you can we are sort of verify of the right direction so these are the two expressions we got for delta l okay uh, now we note one thing if you remember that we also wrote delta l earlier we got is v naught times td minus tb tb is a time when electron enters into the puncture grid and it experiences zero potential so it means that for the consistency of these equations this term and this term they should be zero so that will give us a relationship between ta td tb and uh, other quantities so for these the equations to be consistent okay and in fact for the electrons to meet at the bunting distance delta l uh, we must have these bracketed terms zero that is this is the one equation we should be equal to zero and the other one is this this equation right so minus v naught pi by 2 omega and other terms this should also be equal to zero and these are actually same equations okay you know if you uh, see that you can multiply this uh, this equation with minus one you get this equation so solving one of them is sufficient for us now uh, we will do again one approximation here so this term which has v1 by v0 and we know this is quite less than one and here we have velocity term so if you compare these two terms this has a velocity term v0 which is quite high so v0 pi by 2 omega is much much higher than v0 beta i v1 by v0 pi by 2 omega right uh, so v naught pi by 2 omega so so if we take these terms again v naught pi by 2 omega common so you will have here uh, you know minus 1 plus beta i v1 by v naught so magnitude wise this term is negligible okay so we will neglect it and get an approximate expression like this so v naught beta i v1 by v naught td minus tv is approximately equal to uh, this velocity v0 pi by 2 omega which will give us the approximate value of uh, td by td minus tv to be equal to pi uh, v0 by omega beta i v1 okay and hence delta l in terms of these known parameters is which is v naught times td minus tb will be equal to approximately of course v naught pi v naught divided by omega beta i v1 okay here we raise an important question first of all see we have to you know get some terminology also used this is the space between the puncture cavity and ca catcher cavity is called drift space okay this drift space this is free of any uh, field there is no field in the drift space the question is what should be the distance between the center of puncture cavity to the center of catcher cavity which had l such that there is maximum number of bunching see if there are more and more bunches and there is a maximum bunching that will result in good amplification which we will see later on so this is very important question what should be the spacing the gap between the buncher and catcher cavities so that we can achieve maximum degree of bunching and we have to remember that the drift region is field free okay so we again will use the velocity modulation concept here also to get some idea about what i mean by uh, you know maximum degree of punching here is a diagram which is or uh, which is the distance time plot it's also called apple gate diagram for the cholesterol okay see what it shows this is the time scale and y axis is the distance between puncture gap and 
here is how bunches are formed okay now you you see you take any distance suppose you take this distance right this is not a good bunching right they are not fully together they are not meeting at a one point right a better bunching is here okay because they are forming a perfect bunch here and similarly if i extend this so there they will meet okay so so this point there is a bunch but it is a weak bunch and this is a strong bunch or there is a maximum degree of bunching that's what it means and you see it depends upon the distance so this the optimal distance which we call as lop between the buncher gap and catcher gap is the distance at which we have maximum degree of bunching once more i will take you back to the this cholesterol figure and here you note one more thing this p1 is a time when electron starts going into the drift space okay it leaves the buncher gap and t2 is a time when the electron enters into the catcher gap so the transit time in drift space is between t1 and t2 this is very important so transit time for electron to travel this distance l okay is this distance l the drift space distance what will be that so this is definitely t2 minus t1 right this will be the length divided by the velocity v of t1 but this velocity v of t1 is given by this expression okay so we can also write it as l divided by v naught times 1 plus raised to the power minus 1 so we again use same argument that this v1 by v naught is much much less than 1 and sign is between minus 1 and 1 so it is 1 plus x to the power minus 1 is approximately 1 minus x for x very small than 1 so we can write it as approximately l by v naught 1 minus beta i and this l naught by uh, this uh, sorry this is l l by v naught this distance we call as t naught this will be this is called transit dc transit time okay because this is the uh, you know distance covered at a uh, velocity v naught which is the electron which is unaffected by the field at that time the field is zero so this is the uh, you can say dc transit time dc transit time okay now how much radian is it okay or you can say how much angle is covered so you know that radian is equal to omega times t so which will be omega times t2 minus omega times t1 and which will be equal to omega times uh, t0 minus omega beta i and rest of expression okay simple now we define this omega naught as sorry omega naught t naught which is also omega sorry omega t naught not omega naught omega t naught which is omega l by v naught i represented by theta naught okay and uh, this term beta i and beta i v1 divided by twice v naught omega uh, t naught by v naught uh, there is no t naught this one so this we define as capital x okay see we can also write it as omega t naught is theta naught so we can define this capital x as uh, beta i v1 divided by twice v naught uh, theta naught so with this notation we can write this angle and radians as theta naught minus x sine of omega t1 minus theta g by 2 now this quantity uh, x which we defined as beta i v1 divided by twice v naught theta naught this is important factor for bunching process it's called bunching parameter of cholesterol also if n is the number of cycles number of electron transit cycles in drift space 
then we can write this angle theta naught as 2 pi n naught so by 2 by n okay so we can say that theta naught which was defined as omega t naught which is omega l by v naught can also be written as 2 pi n if we know the number of electron transit cycles now let uh, let we denote by dq naught as the differential charge which passes through the buncher cap so uh, at time interval d naught uh, t naught dt naught sorry differential time interval dt naught that and uh, given if we are given that i naught which is the dc current that is in the time interval dt naught if a dc current i naught is passed through the buncher gap how much charge is passing so that relationship we know that dq naught divided by dt naught is equal to i naught or dq naught is equal to i naught dt naught remember t naught is the time when we enter the buncher cavity but dt naught here is the time uh, you know differential time uh, when the current i naught is passed through the buncher gap but we know the charge is conserved no charge can be produced uh, you know extra so the same charge has to be passed to the catcher cavity okay suppose i2 is the current at catcher gap which is produced at time some uh, uh, you know during time dt2 because of the same charges okay because of the same charges then there will be a conservation of charge so the charge magnitude of charge in particular at buncher cap i have put here mod of dt naught because time difference can be negative also we have to account for that is equal to i2 let the time be dt dt2 so this is the charge which passes through at buncher gap is same as the charge which passes through the catcher gap at the same in at different time okay now we uh, i will again write the expression for transit time of electron uh, in the drift space that was t capital t which is equal to t2 minus t1 we can again rewrite it that t2 is uh, t1 plus t naught 1 minus beta r okay so we also know that we define the transit time in the buncher gap as uh, t1 minus t0 so i can write this t1 as t0 plus tau so this t2 can be written as t0 plus tau and that's the expression and corresponding angle in radians we multiply omega throughout so omega t2 is omega t0 plus omega tau plus omega t naught times so omega uh, omega t2 is equal to this so omega tau omega t naught we call it theta naught and omega tau if you go back it is theta g by 2 previous lecture we have done it okay or not 2 uh, but theta g okay theta g sorry and then uh yeah no one correction here so this will be let's keep it as omega t naught okay so omega tau is theta g which we have done in previous lecture then uh, we have this omega t naught omega t naught we have defined it just now as theta naught okay theta naught minus and then this whole term which is the theta naught okay so you know that we have this this was defined as the punching parameter so i can write it as okay so here we i have written omega t1 minus theta g by 2 we can also write it as omega t naught plus theta g by 2 this has already been discussed i warn all of you that see it is a little bit lengthy derivation so keep track go back and derive it again okay now i will little bit manipulate it uh I have the purpose for that. I can write this whole thing. So this omega t2, I can write it as I can write it as this. You see, it will not make difference. Theta g by 2 here minus theta g by 2, it will get add to up. 
and it will become theta g and then theta naught i can you know write it as minus theta naught here plus theta naught and x sine omega t naught is same okay just manipulation now why i have collaborated together it has some physical significance also if you look at this this uh, omega t naught uh, plus theta j by 2 this you can think of as buncher cavity departure angle because you see t naught is the time when electron enters the buncher cavity and theta g is the angle corresponding to t1 minus t naught that is the transit time so this whole angle is in some sense corresponding to buncher cavity departure angle similarly omega t2 this whole thing omega t2 minus of this t2 is the time when uh, you know uh, when 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 uh, when the electron reach the cavity uh, catcher cavity so you can you can think of this as catcher cavity arrival angle okay uh, but now our main uh, purpose here is to derive the you know current equation so let's take this uh, this equation where we have written t2 is equal to t naught plus tau plus t naught times this whole expression let me differentiate this with respect to t naught so d t2 divided by d t naught is equal to so uh, this is one this is constant with respect to t naught constant with respect to t naught and then this next term we can differentiate let okay let me i have written here omega t1 uh, minus theta j by 2 so i will write it as as i told another form omega t naught plus theta j by 2 okay we can always write it like that and its derivative will be cos of this right so i will write now dt2 divided by dt naught as 1 minus x sine of omega t naught plus theta g by 2 okay it's very simple you just differentiate this with respect to uh, t naught you will get omega times beta i v this and that omega times this is uh, x bunching parameter right and uh, then we get the cosine function oh, oh sorry i have tried cos here it should be cos right nice or in other words second uh, right uh, d dt2 uh, is dt0 times 1 minus x cos of omega t0 plus theta g by 2 now uh, we recall the equation which we have just wrote about the conservation of charge is that i2 uh, dt2 is i0 dt0 assuming the sign is same we will remove the mod right now so i2 is the current at catcher cavity okay so i will write as i2 at as a function of t0 is then given by i0 dt0 by dt2 so this is dt2 by dt0 dt2 by dt2 will be it's uh, you know reciprocal so that will be equal to i0 divided by 1 minus x cos of omega t0 plus theta j by 2 or if you want to write in terms of t2 so we know that the time t2 is t0 the starting time at the buncher gap plus tau the transit time of buncher gap plus capital T the transit time of the drift space I will I will go back to the figure see this is t0 okay this is t0 this is t2 this t2 is equal to the transit time in buncher gap that is tau the transit time in drift space that is t okay and uh, definitely uh, so t0 is okay this is definitely t0 starting time plus this transit time plus this transit time okay so that is why it is t t0 plus tau plus capital t okay so that is what i have written here now i can then again write the current at buncher cavity as function of t2 is this quantity but we know that i not do oh so so t t2 is equal to t0 plus this so t0 is t2 minus tau minus t 
so there will be minus sign here okay and then plus theta g by 2 now what is omega t naught uh, omega t2 will be as it is so, so it is omega t2 okay using this relationship so omega t2 minus omega tau you know that is theta g as defined omega t that was defined as theta naught right and then theta g by 2 plus theta g by 2 these details are not in the book so i am trying to elaborate those points which are not there so it is 1 minus x cos of omega t2 minus theta naught minus theta g by 2 so this is the current through the puncture cavity okay now this current definitely it is uh, a periodic waveform right and you know what is the period period is 2 pi by omega that is what t is all about right so this is the period and hence we can express this i2 as Fourier series so i can write this i2 as Fourier series some constant plus as a function of t2 so this is the Fourier series uh, which you, you you definitely have done and uh, how to get the coefficient so a naught is 1 over 2 pi integral from minus pi to pi i2 d of omega d2 and a n is 1 over pi minus pi to pi i2 cos of n omega t2 d of omega t2 and similarly b n is 1 over pi integral minus pi to pi i2 times sine of n omega t2 d of omega t2 this is the usual uh, Fourier series theory and now okay now uh, when we will try to solve it you will realize that there we will get encounter something called Bessel functions okay so I don't want to elongate the lecture so I want to keep these small small lectures today's lecture was still uh, definitely large now this is the right time that you people go back to the Bessel function lecture okay I have shown you Bessel function during FM okay just revise that so we will use then Bessel function to get couple of things number one we would like to get the optimum length or optimum distance between puncture cavity and the catcher cavity number one number two we will also try to get the uh, some you know measure of output power and also efficiency of the cholesterol in terms of the given quantities so uh, kindly revise this uh, uh, you know um, what i say bessel function and also go through back the whole derivation so that the process is you know known and we are at the right time now and after this we will derive the current expression in terms of that will be in terms of Bessel function so just revise that and then we will uh, derive the expression for optimum uh, length and that way uh, you know we will be completing the cholesterol discussion and then we can uh, start one solid state device maybe gun diode or any other device yeah, thank you